Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you all. Um, we appreciate you coming back and uh, for our new arrivals, um, your testimony here today. It is, um, it's hard to know where to start. Um, as Commander, as you said in response to some previous questions, the only real way to address this level of trauma in children is prevention. And we know that many of these children are coming to this country already experiencing uh, great trauma, where they lived at home, in transit, but we have added to this. And I, I want to reiterate what uh, my colleague, Congresswoman Lee, said. We know that you are trying to do jobs in a tough and, and changing situation, but I think you have to understand how it looks from our vantage point that children are being used in this immigration policy and the harm that we are inflicting on them and on these families may be irreparable and that we have a role in that as the U.S. government. And what troubles me deeply about Homestead is that this is a private contract with Caliburn International, where Secretary John Kelly sits on the board. And they wrote in their filings for the SEC as they announced plans to go public, border enforcement and immigration policy is driving significant growth for our company. Significant growth. At what cost um, to the human experience and to, and to this stain on our country and the way we are treating these immigrant children. And to hear that we continue to pay, and I understand very clearly that we need to understand that these, that migrant patterns are patterns and they're, they're, they go up and down and we want to be ready. But there are other programs out there that exists, like the case management, uh, that I understand is, you know, an, um, Homeland Security program, not under your purview, but it works. And it has great compliance with families getting to court to making sure their asylum cases are heard, have a fair decision. And you, what does it cost? It costs $36 a day. These are the type of programs that I would think that when we are experiencing a decline in population, why aren't we looking at those type of programs that get kids out of detention and with their families and have compliance? Why aren't we looking at increasing our nonprofits that can save money um, instead of continuing to operate Homestead empty at almost double the rate of what we pay some other agencies to take care of children? Um, these are big questions, but if you could give me some direction, Mr. Hayes, I would appreciate it. Uh, yes, ma'am, Congresswoman. So um, I think I just would point out um, that, uh, again, um, the Homestead site and the operator was chosen back in late 2015, long before uh, General John Kelly joined any of the uh, company, uh, companies that you mentioned. Um, yes, we did renew that uh, contract with them. Uh, I would just say that, again, I want to reiterate my statements earlier. I am absolutely committed to, as is Assistant Secretary Johnson and Secretary Azar, to having as many state licensed permanent network beds as possible to receive these children. And we're working to that end. But the challenge that we have, uh, Congresswoman, is that at the end of the day, the final say in those facilities being licensed and receiving children does not lie with the federal government. It requires a partnership with the states and the local communities. And we are, as again, starting to see some resistance to that, and that's very unfortunate. I would respectfully request this committee to help out and, and help us uh, as you know, one of the stakeholders in this process of caring for these children help us achieve that goal of expanding uh, the type of shelters that we have in Ms. Frankel's district that her and I went through. It's about 140 beds for teenage girls, and it's a wonderful facility. That's what we want, and we're working towards that. But um, to Commander White's point, when we see huge influxes uh, of, of children coming across the border and the need to be able to secure them, um, you know, we have to be able to, you know, have those beds available. And if we're having challenges... Mr. Hayes, are you, are you working at all to redefine what we mean by family members? When I was at Homestead, we heard many stories of children coming across the border with grandparents... Ah, yes. ...who did not qualify and made these children unaccompanied minors. Yep. If we're trying to reduce trauma to children 
if we're trying to keep children out of detention beds, not be separated, are you working actively to say, why don't we include aunts and uncles and grandparents in a definition of family that is rational? So that is not my decision. That authority lies with Congress. And I know that the senior staff that I speak to would absolutely support some modifications to the Trafficking Victim Protection Reauthorization and the Homeland right. Security Act that drives that. The, the definition of children who cross the border with a loving grandparent, with abuelita, with an older brother who's over 18, to define those children as, as unaccompanied is a black letter law issue. Congress absolutely has the power to make that change if you wish, but neither DHS nor HHS has any legal authority to consider a child who crossed, even with a loving grandparent, even with a loving older sister, as anyone other than unaccompanied. That's not our call. Right. It's, it's not your call, but would you support that change? I would support that change. I, would you, Mr. Hayes? I, I would as well, and I've heard it from a number of my staff. And I just want to point, I believe that's what the, is at the heart of my fourth operational directive in late June, where we are at this time when it comes to the background check process of the sponsor discharge package. Um, we are treating grandparents and adult siblings the same way we would moms and dads, because as a father of five, I completely agree. I want these kids with family members as they wait for their court proceedings to go forward. Anything I can do to make that faster while it's still holding up a, an, an acceptable level of safety, I will do that in conjunction with the collaboration of my team. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.